Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders and it is that time of the week. It is lecture time and this week's topic guys is prepping for success. How to be a successful trader because many of you quite frankly you're just throwing spaghetti at the wall. You're throwing crap at the wall and you're hoping it sticks. You're random, you're all over the map and you're just like well maybe this will work and maybe that will work. I'm here to tell you that's not going to work, okay? Trading is a very challenging business and you need a systematic approach to, being, uh, approach to being a successful trader. And that means knowing what your methodology is, knowing what your patterns are. You're gonna take breakouts, you can take three bar plays, you're gonna take buy setups. Also knowing the time frame in which you're gonna trade. Are you gonna trade one minute time frames, daily time frames, five minute time frames? Okay, knowing what your management is. Are you gonna be a scalper where you get in and out of trades very, very quickly for 20 cent pops, 30 cent pops? Are you gonna look for two to one targets, three to one targets? one-to-one -to -one targets, okay? On top of all that, how much money are you going to be risking per trade? Are you gonna be risking $5 per trade? Are you gonna be risking $5,000 per trade, et cetera, and so forth? These things are very important. And then on top of all of that, many of you are coming into this business and you're coming in without a trading plan, without a roadmap to success. You're not tracking your trades in a tracking spreadsheet. You're not journaling your experience. You don't have an accountability partner. You don't have a trading buddy. You have no one to keep you on the straight and narrow. Why? I don't know. Most of you think that trading can't be that hard. Well, think of it this way. Every other business, every other thing you've ever done in life, you've had a coach, you've had a trainer, you've had an educator, you've had a teacher, you've had a boss, you've had someone to hold you accountable. Well, I'm here to tell you, you need an accountability partner as well in trading, right? You need a consequence system. But today's lecture, guys, is prepping for success. And we're gonna talk about all of those things. Basically, how to be the best trader that you can be, all right? It's not an easy business, but it's also a wonderful business. You can do this and you will do this if you follow the right, not just methodology, but the right process to be successful. One of the biggest issues I see is many of you out there have never been your own boss before. And that's not your fault, but you've never been your own boss and now, you don't know what it takes to be a boss because you've never been one. And again, that's okay. You're so used to working for a company or a corporation and they tell you what to do all the time. Well, no one's going to tell you what to do in trading. You're there, you, the keyboard, the computer, the monitor, and that's it. No one's going to tell you not to do something. No one's going to tell you to do something. So if you're wasting time or being lazy, no one's going to tell you to stop. If you're making huge mistakes, no one's going to tell you to stop. So these things are very important. And again, we're going to talk in detail about all of those things today. You don't want to miss this. It's a wonderful lecture, guys, prepping for trading success. And we're also going to do a little bit of a mid-year review as well. If you like these videos, guys, please click that like button, hammer, smash that subscribe button. Don't forget those click notifications. If you really like the channel, show me in that section down there and hit that like button, all right? I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. Let's get to it. This week's lecture topic is prepping for success in trading mid-year review. Uh, we talked a little bit about this topic a while ago, perhaps last December, because I like to do a year-end review every year um, and talk about the upcoming trading year. Well, I think it's a good idea to potentially do a mid-year review as well, um, because many of you guys are not on pace to meet your goals or exceed your goals, et cetera, and so forth. Um, so this is a what I would consider a well-rounded lecture in that um, we do obviously have some tech slides, we have some um, some chart slides, et cetera, and so forth, but it's gonna get you to really think um, about your trading, all right, in the way in which you should think about it, because many traders are coming into this business completely lost. You guys are just, you're throwing spaghetti at the wall, you're throwing crap at the wall, and you're hoping it sticks. And that's just not the way it works. And a big reason for that is you don't have a path or a guide to success. Uh, and another big reason for that simply uh, is because you don't have a boss in this business, right? And when you, in most areas of your life, you have a boss telling you what to do. And if you don't do it, they let you know, hey, you're not doing a good enough job. Um, and uh, if you continue to do that, then you're not going to be here much longer. Well, you sit in front of a computer screen all day, and when you make a mistake, you sometimes don't even know that you're making a mistake, right? So we're gonna talk a little bit today also about accountability partners, um, consequence systems, um, but uh, we're gonna talk mainly about prepping for success. You know, we talked about Unwall's book yesterday uh, a little bit, um, but uh, 
I think it's a, it's an important topic because many of you just, you're not doing what you need to do to be successful. We'll just leave it at that, okay? But before we get into any of that, we must first do when will the insanity stop? When will the insanity stop? Well, if humans are involved, the answer is never, 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 never. We have such good things in life and we always just try to mess them up. You ever notice that? You have a good relationship, you try to mess it up. You have a good trade, you try to mess it up by getting out early. Um, you know something's risky, but you do it anyway. We just like to mess stuff up as human beings. So that's why the When Will the Insanity Stop segment probably won't ever go away because humans, well, fear and greed runs the world, it runs the stock market that need to be right, okay? So today's segment is an interesting one. I mean, you guys have heard the stock, and this actually isn't very old. That's the crazy part. Some of you are thinking, AMC, well, shoot, Jared, that's like six months old. That's a year old. No, it's not. This one is actually from like a week ago. Um, I put the person's name out because I thought this was just pretty silly. I am officially all in on hashtag AMC, 99% of my portfolio, and I'll admit I'm sweating a bit. Well, at least it rhymes, right? In two years of trading, I've never made such a bold, most would call stupid move. See, these are the things that get me, guys. And, and, and before I continue this, this is the part about these that I always get curious and wonder about. In two years of trading, so they've been doing this for a couple of years, they're not brand new, I've never made such a bold, most would call stupid move. So this person is very cognizant. They're very aware that many people would think what this person is doing is flat, dumb, stupid, idiotic, but they do it anyway. Okay, anyone else all in on this or am I alone? Hope it pays off because I don't like crying. Now, what would be the purpose to ever go all in? 99% of your portfolio on one stock or one trade, particularly a meme stock. What, what would be the purpose of this? Think about it for a second. You want to get rich quick. That's it, Andy, right? You want to get rich quick. There's no other reason you would ever do something like this. Why are you making such a, quote, bold move? In this case, stupid move. Why? Clearly, you're trading very stressed or you need the money. And guys, why am I continuing to bring this up? I'm continuing to bring it up because scared money don't make no money, all right? If you're trading stressed, you're not going to be a good trader. Find a day job or a night job or a part-time job. Do Lyft, do Uber, be a waiter, be a bartender. Do whatever you need to do to take the stress off of your trading. And now in this case, it's a little different, I guess, because this is in this person's entire portfolio. And I don't think it's a day trade. It's probably a swing trade or a core trade. But I mean, this is ridiculous. Why would you ever do such a thing? And we just answered it. You want to get rich quick or you're broke and you think this is your path to riches. It doesn't work like that. Sure, you're going to see some person on, on TV or some person somewhere that maybe gets lucky. The one out of a thousand, the one out of 10,000, the one out of a million. And you, the problem with people in general is, they're stupid, but that aside, the problem with people in general is they think they are the exception. Well, go look up the term exception in the dictionary and you'll realize it means not everybody, not most people, the exception to the rule. You're not that. You're not the exception. I know you think you are. You're just not, okay? Otherwise, you wouldn't be doing something so stupid. Well, yeah, all right? So think about that for this a second. And next time you want to go do something really, really foolish and stupid, ask yourself, why am I doing something so foolish? Because you want to get rich quick. You want to make money now. It doesn't usually work that way. So that's it for this week's um, insanity. I think this is just re absolutely ridiculous. I hope it pays off. I don't like crying. Man, if you can't handle the loss, don't take the trade. All right. So, what's this year's? What's this year going to look like for you on December thirty first? Okay, mid year review. And like I said, I do this every year, and I typically do it in late December, early January. But I thought it would be a good time to kind of I'll just check up on you guys because I think there's a lot of you that need it, and you should probably be doing a quarterly review. Obviously, you should be tracking your trades every day, every week, every month. And many of you aren't doing that. You could you could admit it. I understand. You're not. Um, but I want to kind of just, I guess, in some ways motivate you guys. And some of these things you're going to see in here today are going to be a little tough to swallow. They will. They're going to be, you know, it's not, it's not going to be easy recognizing that you don't do some of these things or that you haven't met your goals. And the question that you want to ask yourself is why? Why aren't I where I want to be yet? Why are, am I not where I want to be yet? 
And I use the word yet because it's always fixable. All right, unless you put 99% of your portfolio in AMC, but ha ha. But I mean that if you're behind, it's fixable. If you're having a pullback, it's fixable, right? If you're in the dumps, it's fixable. It's always fixable. Think of it like this. There's somebody right now starting brand new today and they're going to get to your goal before you get to your goal, which means it's fixable because they don't have any experience and they're starting right now. So it's always fixable. Okay. So now you ask yourself, goal, plan, action, what's it going to be? One, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these particular slides, but how many of you actually have goals? How many of you actually have a trading plan? And how many of you actually put that trading plan into action? Not many of you, if we're being honest. I know this. I'm not, it's not, I'm not trying to just give you guys a hard time. I know this is true because I see questions every day in the chat room where people ask something that should never be asked in the sense of, well, Jared, is that a wide range bar? Well, I don't know. What does your plan say is a wide range bar, right? Well, Jared, uh, should I apply the 84% rule to that trade? Well, I don't know. What does your trading plan say? Well, I, 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 I was just, I was just trying to, um, I, I, I just wanted confirmation. No, you didn't. You don't know your ass from a hole in the wall. You don't have a plan and you're hoping that I'm going to give you some magical wisdom words of advice that will magically turn your trading around. I'm not going to. Newsflash. It's not going to happen. So why don't you have goals? Why don't you have a plan? And if, if you do have a plan, why aren't you taking action on that plan? You got to ask yourself those things. Excuses. This is what most of... I didn't say most of you, most of us, just people in general, they're filled with excuses. A reason or explanation put forward to defend or justify a fault or offense. I want you to read the second half of that, okay? An excuse or explanation, and here it is, put forward to defend or justify a fault or an offense. It is truly amazing to me. How many people will try to justify or defend something they've done wrong? Why? Because it hurts the ego, baby. Can't handle it. Hurts. Hurts. That's why it's so hard to say, I'm sorry. I was wrong. All right? That's why it's so hard to say those words. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to tell you flat. If you're incapable of that, stop trading now. Just walk away. I'm saving you lots of time, money, and stress. I'll say it again. If you're incapable of admitting fault or saying I was wrong or I'm sorry, give up on trading right now. It's not for you. If your ego is that big, this business isn't for you. Plain and simple. Now, you're not going to believe me because you're going to make an excuse. <laughs> And you're going to keep doing what you've always done, which means you'll keep getting what you've always gotten, which means garbage. Otherwise, you wouldn't be a trader. If you were fulfilled in life and you were getting everything you wanted in life, you wouldn't try. You wouldn't be trying to become a trader. Stop making excuses. Okay. When you're right, give yourself a pat on the back. When you're wrong, admit it. Step in front of it. Admit it. Okay. Don't defend or justify some BS. Only losers do that, okay? I'm not successful. That other guy must be lucky. No, they're not. They just outworked you. That's it. Plain and simple. Being a victim is never, ever productive. Even when you are a victim, playing the victim is never productive. I'm going to repeat that sentence. Even when you're actually a victim, playing a victim is never productive. Because victims don't win. Okay? Stop playing that card. It's not you. And it's not helpful. All right? So... Goal, plan, action, excuse. Maybe we should just put goal, excuse, 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 right? Goal, because many of you do have goals. Like you're like, hey, I want financial freedom. You know, I want to spend more time with my family. I don't want to work at this job anymore. Most of you have goals, but you don't have a plan and you don't have an action. So it's really goal, excuse, excuse, okay? You got to ask yourself, is that going to be you or are you going to be more like this? Goal, plan, action, achieve. Okay. It's not an easy business, but then again, no business really is easy. Okay. It's one thing when you work for someone else, you show up at one time and you go home at another time. And in between the time, your boss tells you what to do. You're basically a mindless robot. Yeah, you are. Trust me, you are. You don't have any risk if the company fails. 
you don't have any real say in it if the company fails because if you're not doing a good job, they'll get rid of you anyway. In trading, it's all about you, 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 you. And this is why it's so hard for people. They can't understand that they are the product of their success or their failure. Because in life, they're so used to pushing and blaming someone else. Well, my boss doesn't like me. That's why I didn't get the promotion. Yeah, well, that company didn't fit me. That's why they fired me. Well, they don't know what they're losing. It's always somebody else's fault in life. How often do you honestly admit, yeah, I suck. Yeah, I stink. So rare, it's not even funny. But you do. Otherwise, you wouldn't be trying something else, okay? So stop making excuses and start working towards your goals with a plan of action to achieve great things, okay? Because otherwise, talk is just cheap, man. It's just so cheap, but the walk's expensive. Think about it in uh, Weshman call it terms. Every January, what, what's everybody do? I have a New Year's resolution. What is it? I'm going to go back to the gym. Uh-huh, okay. That lasts about a, what, a month? About a month, because the walk is expensive. It's so expensive. It's easy. You can get motivated for a couple days, a week, a month, maybe even two months. But what about two years? Oh, well, you know, there's other things that... Um... Sorry about that, guys. There's other things that come into mind or other things you make. Wait for it. I'm going to go back to it. Excuses. Excuses right? Because the walk is hard, man. It's really hard to wake up and do what's necessary every day because it's not easy. Some days you wake up on the wrong side of bed and you just don't want to do it. Those are the days you need to do it more because they're the hardest days to overcome, all right? But many of you, you're just not doing what's required when it's required. I want you to think about what I said. You know, for example, you're not supposed to take five trades a day, but you took seven. You know, for example, you're not supposed to sell before 2R, but you got out at 1.2R. You know, for example, that you're not supposed to take a stock that has a 50 cent spread with a $1 stop loss, but you do it anyway. Because the walk is expensive. You can't help yourself. And then you end up making an excuse for why you did it. Guys, we're just people, man. It's not going to be easy. And if it were easy, everyone would be doing it. And it wouldn't be worth anything. You ever notice the highest paying jobs for the most part are the jobs that are the hardest to get? Because they're hard, right? It's hard to work your way into that position or that spot. The best traders aren't lucky. They just walked the expensive walk. They learned from mistakes. And from those mistakes, they made, they made corrections. What are you doing about it? Anybody can talk, right? I mean, that's all we have in life these days. Politicians talk, 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 talk. Everybody knows what's best for you. No, you know what's best for you. The problem is it's too hard. It's too hard. That's why you don't do it. Think about what I just said. It's too damn hard. That's why you don't do it. And then you love to go on the blame game and talk about other people that are successful and say they're just so lucky. Oh, well, their parents helped them out. Or they did this or they did that. No one, everyone else's situation is none of your business or concern. You know whose situation is of concern? Yours. Don't worry about what Bill Gates is doing. Don't worry about what Michael Jordan is doing. Don't worry about what your neighbor is doing. Don't worry about what your cat is doing. Worry about what you're doing. Because that's all that matters. Because those people aren't going to help you. Only you can help you. I'm going to repeat that one. Only you can help you. Most of you just don't have it in you. That's all. That's all right. You know, you'll learn to do something else. Right? What is that lesson? I can't remember that quote. You're going to learn the uh, the pain of discipline or you're going to learn the pain of regret. Something to that effect. That's not the exact quote, but it's close. You'll learn the pain of discipline and hard work or you'll learn the pain of regret. One of those two things is going to happen. Okay, so let's dig in. All right, let's dig in here a little bit. There you go, Dougie. Money management is everything. Simulators are not real. It's going to take a lot longer than you think, and well, shit happens. Getting filled isn't always easy. I took 27 cent slippage yesterday on a trade. It, it affected the trade. You might have some internet problems. You might have frozen trading platform. Markets, you know, market servers are down. HFT shakeouts, insane random news and tweets. Okay, there is no holy grail. So you better have a plan, and that plan should have an answer to every one of those things that happens. 
all right? And every once in a while, your plan will get caught off guard, right? You can't think about every little thing. So have a plan for that too. So these are things you need to consider. If you can't manage your money, you won't be a successful trader. In fact, you won't be successful at anything in life if you can't manage money. Seriously, you won't. I don't care what business it is that you run. If you don't know how to manage your money, take care of your business, you won't be successful. Simulators aren't real. Why am I saying this? That means if you're in a simulator, that's fine. Trade for a couple few weeks. Learn the buttons. Learn what an, a buy order is, a sell order is, a stop limit order, stop market is, and then move away from that. Get to real money as quickly as possible, $5 risk. That means if you're wrong, you lose five bucks, no big deal because they're not real. The emotions aren't real. The fills aren't real. It's going to take a lot longer than you think to be good at this. No, oh, I'm not dream crushing. I'm telling you the truth. You came in, you thought three, six, nine months was enough, maybe a year. It's not. It's not. One more time. It's not. Okay? People are, you know, I, I did a, a lecture or video on this a while ago. Someone was complaining. Like, Jared always says it takes so long. Why is he so negative? I'm not negative. I'm the most positive person you're going to meet because when it takes you two years and you thought it was going to take you one year, the person you're going to thank is me. Is me because you're still trading after two years when you would have given up after one if you hadn't heard me tell you. It takes a lot longer than you think. If you get it before that, awesome, wonderful. There's no harm in that either. It's only positive to give yourself a longer timeline than a shorter time. There's nothing negative that can come from a longer timeline, but there's a lot of negative time, negative things that can come from a shorter timeline, period. I'm not going to get into it because I talk about it all the time. All right. There's no holy grail, so have a plan. There is no one thing I'm going to tell you. There's no one thing anyone else is going to tell you that magically will go, I'm a great trader now. None of those things are going to happen. You're going to work for every inch you get in this. Every inch, you're going to work for it. Every once in a while, you'll skip an inch and you get two inches. You're going to work for all of it though. Because it's hard. All right? So, plan. Implement, measure, assess, improve, plan, implement, measure, assess, approve. And you're going to go through this over and over and over like a hamster wheel. Over and over and over and over. All right? This is what breeds success. You're going to put something together on paper. You're going to try to think it through well. Then you're going to go out and you're going to try to implement that in real world trading. You're going to try to take the paper plan and put it into the real world. Then... In your tracking spreadsheet, you're going to measure the results. You're going to say, hey, this is what happened over my last 50 trades. You're going to measure it. And then you're going to assess the measurement and go, okay, what do those measurements tell me? All right, uh, I lost 3R over the last 50 trades and I had a 42% batting average with a 0.8 sharp ratio. Okay, well, what do I need to do to improve? What was the problem? Was I taking too many trades? Was I taking bad trades? Was I taking good trades, but poorly managing those good trades? Was I taking generally good trades, but allowing one or two bad trades to destroy all my profits? Well, you're going to make those adjustments, put them in your new plan, and you're going to start the process all over again. So simple, but yet how many of you actually do it? So simple, but how many of you actually do it? Not that many probably, okay? Protect yourself at all times. This is to money management, guys. All right? This is a, a kind of a, a loss chart. If you lose 5%, you need 5.3% to get back to break even. Not a big deal. You get down to the 25, 30, 35%, it starts getting real. Like if you lose 30% of your account, now you need a 43% gain just to go break even. If you lose 50% of your account, you need a 100% gain just to get back to break even. What does this all mean? It means money management is really, really, really important. Hence, protect yourself at all times, okay? In the end, you have to protect yourself at all times. Floyd would know, because Floyd's the man, all right? Maybe not outside of the ring, but inside the ring, he's the man. Protect yourself. Money management is number one. Without it, you're not gonna be a trader for very long. And trust me, if you dig a hole and it doesn't even have to be that deep of a hole. Climbing back out is going to be tremendously challenging. You don't want to even put yourself in that position. So you guys get tired of me preaching money management. This is why I do it. So that you're not in this position. And you can never hear it enough. Okay? You guys have seen this before, so I'm going to go through it quick. I've probably put this in like 
eight of my lectures. It's just so, so wonderfully bad that I had to put it in. This isn't money management, right? This is like every week, when will the insanity stop? Okay, I'm doomed. I need this to be above $3.80. I'm going to have a heart attack. Oh, I'm down 2000 I don't know what to do. Hold or cut my losses. I'm down $4,000 in an hour. So bad that four minutes later, this particular person felt the need to say it again. The world doesn't care, man. I'm sorry to tell you, none of us give a shit. We don't care. You know why we don't care? It's not our money. It's your money. Guess who cares a lot, though? You do. You do. You know when you're in the chat room or anywhere else, um, and somebody's like, yeah, I'm down 3R today, and you're up 2R? What's the first thing you're thinking? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, dude. Hey, man, what's for lunch today? Yeah, what, what am I going to have for dinner? Th that person losing three R's, so it's, it's it doesn't even register. It gets like a quarter of the way into your ear and it's spit out. You don't even think about it. Why? You're up two R. And the only person you care about is me, so me, baby. Me, 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 me. At the end of the day, we're all NFL wide receivers. Me, baby. Me, me, me. Why don't you pass me the ball enough? Me, me, me. I don't care this person lost four grand. He's an idiot. Why am I saying that, Jared? You're mean. No. Hold or cut my losses? You don't have a plan. Whoopsie. Hold or cut my losses? You don't have a plan. That's not my fault you don't have a plan. It's your fault. I don't feel bad for you. Think about it in, in life in general. What do people do all the time? All right? Your brother, your sister, your mom, your in-law, your spouse, whoever. Oh, my gosh. You wouldn't. You can't believe how my day went today. It's just, I woke up this morning, I got a flat tire. And then as soon as I, I a flat tire happened, there, it started pouring down, raining. And I went out there to look at it and it was on this busy road and somebody ran by in a puddle and splashed me. And I don't know how to change a flat tire. So I had to call AAA and they took an hour and a half because of the rain. I get in, my boss yells at me because I'm late and he just doesn't understand that, hey, the flat tire is not my fault. And then you go in and then the boss calls me into the office and tells me that, um, well, He's docking my, my pay because I came in late. And this is the second time. And then you go on and on and on and on and on and on for like 32 minutes. And the person listening is like, are you freaking done yet? And then what do you do, though? What do you do? Instead of saying to the person, are you freaking done yet? What do you do? Man, that really sucks, man. What a bad day. And then you make some like ridiculous comment like, hey, Johnny, did you hear, you know, Susie's just having a really bad day today. It sucks. You know, be nice to her. You don't give a shit. You don't care. You just want the person to shut up. Stop. Stop talking about your day because I don't care. Why? It doesn't affect me. It doesn't affect me. Now, if they lost their job and you're their spouse and it's going to cost the family money, you might actually show a little bit of interest in that conversation. Admit it. You're all the same. You're all the same. Once in a while we care, but 90% of the time we don't. You're just sitting there thinking two things are happening. One, when are you just going to shut up? And two, when am I going to get to tell you how bad my day was? Tell me I'm wrong. One of those two things happened. When, when are you going to shut up? Or when can I just, just jump in here and tell you how bad my day was? Because now you want to one-up the person because misery loves company. Oh, if you think your day was bad, hear about my day. Oh my gosh, bang your head against the desk. Nobody cares. So... That was a long, drawn-out analogy there. I spent three minutes rambling in circles, but you get the point, okay? People don't care. So when you quit trading because you had terrible money management, just let, just want you to know, none of us care. We're going to act like we care, but we really don't care, okay? We don't. Now, next, here's another example. Schooled by Boeing. Trader lost 20% of his account not using a stop loss. Oh, my gosh. $5,000 loss on a $25,000 account because, well, they didn't use a stop loss. These things, guys, they happen. They really happen. I know you don't think that they can ever happen to you because, wait, you're different. You're God's special child. We talk about it all the time. You're different. But this really happens. Trader lost 50% of his account not using a stop loss. So if 20% wasn't enough, 50% is even better. Breaks below the red line here, which is where the stop loss should have been. It just keeps on going, and going, and going, and going. What's the thought process? First, it's, holy, wow, this is terrible. Oh, my gosh. And then the next thought is, well, it'll bounce back. It'll bounce back. It'll bounce back. And then it just doesn't bounce back. And now you're a bag holder. Because almost definitely, you're not going to take a 50% cut. 
you're going to sit there and quote, hope and pray that it comes back to break even because you're stupid. Because if you weren't stupid, you would have taken your stop in the first place. Mm hmm. Yep. I know. Common sense is uncommon. Why am I so harsh on people? Because the market is way worse than I can ever be. I could sit here and call you an idiot to your blue in the face, but you losing 50% in the market is way worse than any words I could use for you. Just don't be that person. Don't be that person. Why am I saying all this to you? You're like, well, geez, Jared, this is some basic stuff here, money management. We hear it all the time. I know. But we're halfway through the year, and how many of you are still pulling this crap? Even if you didn't lose 50% of your account, how many of you let a stock occasionally go past your stop loss and think, oh, it'll come back? Not even about stop losses. How many of you have a target that's maybe a dollar and you get out for 70 cents and you make some ridiculous justification, excuse for it? How many of you are still doing that? You set these rules in place six, seven months ago and you're still doing the same thing and you're making the same mistakes. You keep on doing what you've always done. You'll keep on getting what you've always gotten. Why? Why are you doing that? Because no one's holding you accountable. That's the answer. Because no one is holding you accountable. Okay? So now, are you going to take good trades? Or, right? Are you going to take good trades? Or. So this is a good trade. And you all say you're going to take these trades. Like, oh my gosh, look at that beautiful buy set. Oh, look at that breakout. Oh, look at this breakout right here. It moves higher. Look at this perfect pullback right here. Like 37.50. Wow. You pin this up and put it on your wall. It's like, and I don't want, and this isn't being a dream crusher, so don't take it that way. It's like when you, you know, you pin that Lamborghini on your own, you're like, someday I'm going to have that. And you believe it. And that's good. There's nothing wrong with that. That's great. And what happens eventually? The Lamborghini gets taken off your wall. Because life smacked you in the face. And then punched you a couple times. And you're like, that's not happening. There's no need for me to look at that anymore. I still want it. Just like I did five, ten years ago. But but I'm not putting it on my wall anymore. You know, it just reminds me of all the things I can't have in life. Tell me I'm wrong. When you're in high school or college, you put stuff on your wall or you have a little vision board or whatever you call it of things that you're going to achieve in life, things you're going to succeed in and do in life. And then when life smacks you between the eye once in a while, what happens? Instead of motivating you, it drops you down a peg or two. And now one of those things on your vision board gets forgotten about or taken off. It's no longer, ah, you make an excuse why you don't want that anymore. When in reality, it's because you've given up on it. Given up on it. So back to the chart. This is what you're supposed to be trading. Don't give up on it. Trade perfect patterns. Trade great patterns. Don't give up on good patterns. What happens? You look at this chart, you put it on your wall, you poster size it and you go, that's what I need to trade to be a good trader. Five minutes into the market day and you're taking crap. You're taking junk. You're taking garbage. Something that doesn't look anything like this. It's like putting a Lamborghini on your wall but driving a Honda Civic. What happened? Right? So let's take a look. This is the kind of stuff that people do. So we look at MRNA. You can say this is a little bit older. Okay? It's not that old but a little bit older. Right? Gaps down. Goes lower. Gives you like this little two, three bar play, and you take it. And then you look at the 15 minute chart and you're scratching your head like, what the hell's wrong with me? What's, oh, there's two ways to look at this. What's wrong with me? I forgot to look at multiple time frames or you damn well knew that that support was sitting there at 135 on the 15 minute chart. You see the bottoming tail here from two days ago? It bounced. You see the bottoming tail again? It bounced. Unless you're under 135, there's support right there. Why would you ever take a stock that just dropped four or five dollars from 142 down to 137, 137.50? Extended, you can see it right there, extended into support. Why would you ever take this trade? You don't have to raise your hands. I see your questions every day. I see the trade ideas every day. So you know how many of you in here are guilty of doing this? 70% of you? Because you just can't hold off. You're just so excited that you saw what looks to be maybe a three bar play. You just can't pull back off of it. It's no different than me getting on Deepak today for taking a one minute high on QCOM that had no pattern whatsoever and it's quote, I like the gap. Really? Wow, I like the gap too. And I saw QCOM too. We didn't take it. There's no pattern there. 
Okay? We can laugh. But that person's not sitting in a Porsche or dry or you know floating in a yacht. No, no, he's not. Despite winning on that trade. And it, it worked, KL, it worked. But if it worked that much, they'd have those things we talked about, right? So you know better than to take this trade. But many of you do it anyway. You gotta ask yourself why. Let's take a look at another one, okay? Here's a stock, moves up, chops around, consolidates, pulls back, breaks some support, and then rips, right? Has a little breakout right here, okay? It's going higher, it's going higher. Oh my goodness, look at this three bar play, oh my gosh. Wide range green bar, narrow range resting bar. Not only that, it engulfs the red bar. Whew, hot stuff right here. Wide range green bar, narrow range resting bar, it engulfs the red bar. Sign me up. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe don't sign me up for this one. And here's the rub. It worked. Right? I mean, if you look at this here at 170.25, whatever it is, you probably got a couple R out of it. Does it mean you should take it? No. And that's the worst kind of trade. Ones you shouldn't have taken in the first place, but they end up working, so you justify the mistake. It's up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bars. Nine, you heard me. Nine bars straight up on the 60 from $160, in this case, really $158, up to $170, $171, bucks, straight up. But, 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 but it worked. That's why you're still sitting there listening to me. Because otherwise, you'd be teaching it. Because if you keep taking this crap, they're not all going to work. In fact, a good portion of them aren't going to work. And that's another issue with these markets. Stocks that are extended continue, you know, continue to get more and more extended, right? Point though is this is not a good trade. End of discussion. It's just not a good trade. I could understand why it might confuse you because the red bar gets engulfed followed by a narrow range resting bar. It's still not a good trade because the 60 is too extended, right? Let's try it again. Here's another example. And I know damn well you guys take these trades all the freaking time all the time it's one of my biggest pet peeves in the chat room is when a stock is up like four or five days in a row and you guys take them and then they work and you're like duh jared it worked dude lay off man one two three four five sixth day up near some resistance no thanks I went ten dollars what's your problem jared what's your problem no What's your problem? I have all the toys. I have all the stuff. What's your problem? Wide range bar, in this case, that happens to be $2.50 wide, which is more than an average day's move for this. Okay? So the first bar of the day is $2.50. Narrow range resting bar. It's a three bar play. Sorry, it's a two minute three bar play. But look at the daily chart. It's up six days in a row. Six. And it works. 53 by 52, it works. In fact, it went somewhere in the neighborhood of $6. It went 6 to 1. What's your problem, Jared? Right? Not taking it. It's up six days in a row. And here's the rub. When it fails, you're like, yeah, it was probably a little bit extended. When it works, you're like, yeah, I'm the man. I'm a genius. Huh? And again, this is another product of the Fed just dumping ridiculous amounts of money into the markets over the last couple of years. A lot of stocks that are extended continue to get more extended. Long term, you're going to have a real big problem doing this. But it's all right. You just keep doing what you've always done and you'll keep getting what you've always gotten. And you'll go back to the life that you're always used to. You'll see. Okay, you'll see. This is not a good trade. Now that that's a much better trade, right? That's a much better trade. A wide range bar taking out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven red bars over a pivot with a narrow range resting bar, 83 by 82, and it rips. The stock, you can see by the moving average, it's rested for three days in a row. That's what you want. You don't want to take a stock that's up six days in a row. You want to take a stock that's not extended. 
And remember, we can take stocks up second, third day. Once you get fourth, fifth, sixth day, and we've done that lecture, remember? Up three bars, think sell. Up four bars, really think sell. Up five bars, really, really think sell. Up six bars, just go buy a meme stock. Okay? So then you want to think to yourself, okay, I got in the trade. Now am I going to manage it out properly? Am I going to follow my rules? Because there's two sides to this, right? There's folks that are taking bad trades and they don't know they're taking bad trades. And we all do that, right? I mean, when you're new, that happens. There's folks taking bad trades that know they're being aggressive. And then there's folks taking good trades. So you want to be on the side of taking good trades, but that's only one half of the equation, right? Once you've taken a good trade, excuse me, a good trade, you got to manage that trade out. So ask yourself, well, should I be bar by barring my trades? Should I be doing all or nothing? Should I be using pivots? Should I be using some form of a hybrid approach? Now, why is this such an important question? It's an important question because management is one of the more challenging things to do for most, not everybody, but 90% of the people struggle more with management than patterns, right? 10% of the people struggle more with patterns than management. And one of the issues I see with traders is they know that it's hard to get two to three to, through two to three to one targets, but they don't do anything about it. So for example, you might say there and go, you know, I really challenge, I, I'm challenged to get to a three to one target because of the patience or lack of patience. But I never see you taking half off at one R or two R or raising your stop or anything like that. I'm not saying you should. I'm simply saying if you're cognizant and you recognize the deficiency, the deficiency is patience is a problem and you get more jittery, maybe you should figure out a way to mitigate that jitteriness. So maybe take a third or a half off. I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying if you're struggling to reach those targets and you're selling too soon, maybe one way to keep you from selling too soon would be to take a little bit off. Take the edge off, so to speak. Something about Mary is what I call it. The something about Mary approach. If you haven't seen the movie, I'm not going to explain it to you. But if you have, you know what I'm talking about. All right. So this is a pretty chart. This is a stock that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think it's eight red days down, something like that. And now it gaps up entirely over, entirely over that red bar from the previous day. Okay? <laughs> exactly, Chris. Right? Um, so you're gapping up over that red bar. Well, that's a pretty bold gap. You're taking out all of the sellers from yesterday. Okay, and now all these people that shorted the stock are going to want to cover the stock, so it should be a catalyst to push it higher. So it's choppy off the open, right? You could make an argument to get in over here where the arrow is. You could. It's a tougher entry, but you could make the argument. Again, it's a tougher entry. Okay, moves on up, pulls back, lower high, lower high, lower high, bottoming tail, doji bar at support. 1385 is your buy, 1370 is your stop loss. First target is always that prior pivot high. That prior pivot high, just FYI, is about $14.35. So that's 50 cents away on a 15 cent stop loss. So you do have a three to one risk to reward back to the high of the day. So this is a stock that's worth taking. Your risk to reward is good. It's shown a lot of strength. The daily is not likely going to pull back anymore today. It's gapped up over a red bar after a hugely extended move with nothing above it. And the buy setup is at support with a bottoming tail and a doji bar. And each one of these two red bars earlier got engulfed by green bars. But not all trades are this straightforward. That's a straightforward buy setup. But most of you should be waiting for the straightforward buy setup. Okay. And what I mean is, we talk about this frequently. When you wake up in the morning, not every gap is, is a good one. And there are days where the gap list just flat stinks. Right, you come in like I think it was Monday. We had like five ideas on the gap list, and you're just sitting there like, oh man, there's nothing wrong with sitting on your hands that day. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. So don't be opposed to doing so. But you should be waiting for high quality patterns, high quality setups. Try to be less aggressive. It's okay occasionally to be aggressive, right? I mean, maybe you're up a lot for the day and you're like, yeah, it's a little bit aggressive, but I'll give it a shot. Why? Because I'm already up 3R for the day. But if you're one of those traders that's struggling with batting average, for example, only take great patterns. And this is where tracking your trades comes back into play. And this is where we look at this right here. And you go back to plan, implement, measure, assess, and improve. 
you need to know who's trading. You need to understand through your measurements and assessments who's, you know, what the issues are. So you might come across and go, you know what? I'm actually a pretty darn good trader, except for when I take mediocre patterns. And those mediocre patterns, well, they don't have a high batting average. So go back and divide your trades, grade your trades, and then say, all right, all my trades that have a seven or higher, say a seven out of 10, they have a 61% batting average. But my trades that have a four, five, or six, they average a 42% batting average. Think about that. You're like, well, gosh, that's pretty eye-opening. The trades that you know I grade highly do very well, and the grade the trades that are mediocre don't do so well. Well, that's an easy improvement to make. Don't take crappy trades and have somebody hold you accountable to it. Okay? So learning how to trade, guys. There's more to trading than just learning textbook patterns. We need to evaluate information quickly. Sometimes something that is not perfect per the textbook is actually an outstanding trade. This this is called experience. This one is the hardest one to, for, to sort out and figure out. Okay, I'm going to read it for you again. Sometimes something that is not, quote, perfect per the textbook is actually an outstanding trade. The one that comes to mind is relative strength. When I see relative strength on an Apple, Amazon, Google, Facebook, whatever, I'm willing to let the pattern be a little less than perfect because the relative strength is just so incredible. And I talk about it frequently. That would be an example where the textbook doesn't do a good enough job or a good job of explaining that the pattern isn't perfect, but the trade really is because of the extreme relative strength or weakness. This doesn't mean to go buy one minute highs or lows. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you might look at a pattern and go, for example, well, you know, bar number two on that three bar play is more like 65%, 70% of bar number one. But the relative strength it's showing is so ridiculous or the bottoming tail that it left is so incredible that I'm going to jump in it anyway. That, that's going to take some experience. But here's the good news. You don't have to worry about this when you're new. If you just focus on great textbook trades, you will do very well. To get you over that next plateau, well, you'll start seeing some nuances. And that's called experience, right? And these things will come with time and experience. Okay? So put it all together. What's it look like? Well, we have a two-minute chart, a 15-minute chart, and a one-minute chart. Do you see this one minute chart? Look at that little bottoming tail followed by that button. These are money bars. This is what I mean by time and experience. So you might, for example, look at this two minute chart right here and go, well, it is a wide range green bar followed by a red bar with a bottoming tail and then another one. So you could argue it is a four bar play, but some traders might get a little concerned like, well, gosh, you know, bar number two is not in the upper 50%. And if I look at the textbook, Almost every four bar play in the textbook in professional trading strategies is in the upper 50%. Every single one's in the upper 50%. But this one's not. I'm not going to take LMND. But if you look at the one minute, look at that bottoming tail. Look at that fourth bar of the day bottoming tail. Look at that. First of all, Van, that's one of the most foolish, ridiculous things I've ever heard when it says the textbook is not real life trading because almost every chart in the textbook is a trade that I have taken, and I've taken it from real time. I didn't fabricate or put those together. They are all real charts. So when you say it's not real life trading, that's ridiculous because they're all real charts. So I don't understand that. Are they everyday charts that you're going to trade 100% of the time? No, but they're real life trades. They're just not every single day. Like we don't get level one gaps every day. We get them like three times a month, right? But they're real, okay? And another thing, this is a little off topic, a little off topic. I know some traders, they update, they send me emails, and they'll take 10, 20 trades a month. And I'll say, why so few trades? Because, Jared, these are the most perfect trades that I can find. But they also have 70% batting averages. And they're making 10 R a month on 10, 20 trades. They're literally waiting for perfect patterns. So they might only take two, three, four trades a week. Guys, look at Cliff, for example. How many trades would you surmise Cliff has taken in the last two weeks? I'm going to guess five or 10 trades, literally. I mean, it, I'm sure he's taken a couple I don't know about. In 10 trading days, five or 10 trades, right? I mean, he's only called three or four, but he always seems to get his 10 or 20 R every month, doesn't he? He's just waiting, waiting, waiting for his pitch. I'll walk to first. I'll walk. I'll wait. 
You know what I mean? Jeff Yates also, not that many trades recently. But did you notice a month or two ago, they were both calling trades out the wazoo? Well, earnings season's coming back up, and I expect to see them calling more trades. Because they wait for perfect patterns, and they get the results. All right, so back to this example. You might look at the 15 and go, okay, there's room to go higher. That's good. That's my void. I did my homework. But then you might look at the two and go, yeah, I don't know. It's I'm confused on this one because we don't typically take four bar plays that like look like this, Jared, because the textbook, you know, says usually bar two and bar three should be in the upper 50%. But then when I jump down on the one minute chart, I'm sitting there looking at these bottoming tails and I'm going, oh my gosh. There's no way I'm not taking this trade. So you get in at 117, and you could put your stop loss either here under this bottoming tail or here down here at 115. I probably would have used the tighter stop like 115.75. This thing ultimately went like $3.50 on what would have been probably $1.25 on the stop. Even if you used a $2 stop, didn't quite go 2R, went about 1.75R. But this is what I mean by sometimes certain patterns are going to take experience to understand. So this one, you're going to think, okay, 15 minutes looks good. The two minute, I'm I'm a little questionable on. But once you drill down on the one minute, this is a great example of going higher time frame and lower time frame, one above and one below to get your entry. And this is, ends up being a tremendous pattern. I'd love to see this every single day of the week. Ultimately, it did get up to 122. So if you were doing all or nothing on this, it did go $5. So even if you used a wide stop, it did hit 2R, okay? Here's another example. These get tough sometimes because you see this stock gap up and then it moves up to the 176, 177 area. And you're looking at it going, man, that's like a $6 move. Now, this is a stock that we can see here that does somewhere between, I would say, $8 to $10 a day, right? If you look at the previous day on PDD, it was doing about an $8 range. If you look at, or two days ago, sorry, if you look at the previous day on this, uh, it was doing somewhere around a $10 range. So moving up $6 off the open isn't the end of the world. We probably have two to $4 left. The stop loss might be an issue, but we know it's got two to $4 left. But now we look at this area and go, wow, this could be an issue. And what happens? It rips up into that pink line and then puts in a wide range red bar. It should have. It should have had a reaction there and then rips higher later, okay? So we're looking at this and we're saying, uh, let's call it 177, okay? Well, what do we do here, right? This is a tough one because this is a stock that has a wide range green bar followed by a narrow range green bar. So by all intents and purposes, it's a three bar play. Now we look over to the 15 and we're scratching our head going, shoot, it's at 175.50? I'm over 174, but I do have this junk over here that I have to contend with. I have the high of the day at 176.50, right? The high of the previous day. And I have this junk over here to the left. Shoot, what am I going to do about that? Right? So you have to make decisions sometimes. And in this case, it worked, but that doesn't mean it was the right decision. So you might say, you know what? The market's pulling back to support. And this is showing tremendous relative strength. And the market looks like it's about to bounce. I'm going to take PDD. Or you might say, the market's straight up nearing resistance, and so is PDD. I'm not going to take it. Sometimes you're going to be right. Sometimes you're going to be wrong about that. But that's one where you have to make a decision, right? And this is the type of trade where you might want to lay off it if you don't have the experience. It looks great on the two, not so much on the 15. In hindsight, you'll look back and go, duh, I was an idiot. No. You weren't. You made the right decision with the available information you had at the time. Okay? Now this, this is pretty easy, right? This is a stock that for one, two, three, four days has been consolidating, okay? The Qs are going straight up. This stock is strong. So it opens up with this crazy bar off the open. Big old red bar, okay? Topping tail, bottoming tail, and then the red bar, following the red bar, green bar, green bar gets put in it goes higher puts in a new high and pulls back but notice the pullback lower high lower high lower high bottoming tails i mean this is a beautiful pullback right to support previous days high previous previous days high right to it market's going straight up great so 112 is the entry 111.60 is the stop loss and this thing just rips 
right? I mean, you have the prior pivot high right there at like, I don't know what that is, 113, 113.50. So you only have a 40 cent stop loss, but by the time you get to the prior pivot high, you're up at least two to one. This, this is a no brainer trade. A little choppy off the open, but a beautiful sequential pullback, 50% retracement at support with a little tiny bottoming tail with a strong market. Done. This sh there shouldn't be any, quote, decisions on this one. This is a no-brainer. So you can sit here and go, all right, well, I ignored the PDD trade right there because I wasn't sure about the 15. But when I got to the PDD trade on this time frame, right, on a different day, different day, this just happened yesterday, all right, then I'm going to sit there and this is a no-brainer. I can't not take this, okay? So be smart. Choose quality. You don't need quantity. Choose quality, all right? And guys, by the way, no, it doesn't suck, okay? Monday doesn't suck. Your genetics don't suck. The weather doesn't suck. Your partner doesn't suck. Your negative mindset sucks. That's what sucks, okay? So stop complaining about what's missing from your life and go and manifest the crap out of your dreams. Remember we talked earlier about excuses, excuses, excuses? Stop making them. Start making solutions. Stop making excuses. It doesn't suck. Okay, and also there are going to be bad days in life. There are going to be down days in life. There are going to be days, like I said, are you just not happy that day? Something happened. Maybe something, nothing happened. You're just not in a good mood. That happens. We're human beings. We're not robots. But take the big picture approach. It doesn't suck. Okay, your life is good. Think about it for a second. You've won the proverbial lottery. For men, almost everyone listening, you've won the lottery. Why? You were born in a first world country. You won the lottery. So no, life doesn't suck. And because you're in that country, you can likely do or be anything you want. No one is holding you back from doing that. It's 2021. No one's holding you back. Stop making excuses. No one's holding you back. So stop making excuses, okay? Life is wonderful. Life is beautiful. Life is incredible. Take that attitude out into the world today and tomorrow and the next day, okay? So what's your path? Well, the more objectively and accurately you define yourself as an individual and build your trading style around it, the more successful you will be as a trader. Okay? So remember, outcome goals without process goals are just pipe dreams. You all have the goals, the outcome. I want a Ferrari. I want a Lamborghini. I want a million dollars a year. I want a hundred grand a year. I don't want to work for my boss anymore. I want to work one hour a day. I want to retire. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. How? How, 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 how are you going to get it? How are you going to get it? Process. Process, process, process. So think about the available time you have, your personality style, your financial resources, your personal preferences. We're all a little different. Certain things make us click and tick. We're all a little different. Outcome goals are easy. We all have those. Everybody's got some type of dream. How are you going to get it, though? What's going to lead you to it? All right. Think about those things. And that, that's where the hard work comes in. It doesn't fall out of the sky. Successful people aren't lucky, okay? Everyone's going to get their breaks in life. Are you ready for the break when it happens? That's the question, okay? That's the question. So here's what's required. Most traders fail because they have no idea what's expected. You're going to need education and guidance. Why? Because everything in life requires education and guidance. Everything in life requires this. You've learned from everything you know, you've learned from somebody. That's Think about what I just said. Every single thing you know, you've learned from somebody. You read an article about copper. I don't know where I come up with this stuff. You didn't write the article. Someone else did. You learned about copper from someone else. You might add your own spin to it, but just about everything you learn in life, the foundation or core of it came from somebody else. You might personalize it, but it still came from someone else, okay? You're going to need a well-defined trading plan to succeed. Well-defined roadmap, okay? Proper tools, charting software, adequate internet, tracking spreadsheet, defined goals, okay? You're going to need objectivity and humility. Man, trading's tough. And the market's never wrong. Just think of the market as your spouse. It's never wrong. And even when it is, it's still not wrong. Learn from your mistakes. Never stop working hard. Be objective. Do not make excuses. And then lastly, you're going to need experience. You can put all of these things into a bucket and they don't mean anything without actual real world experience. 
You can drive a car in a simulator all you want. You can fly a jet in a simulator all you want. But I bet you your heartbeat doesn't go to 200 beats a minute when you lose cabin pressure at 42,000 feet. I bet your heartbeat doesn't go to 180 beats a minute when somebody yells fire at 42,000 feet. In the simulator, it's like, okay, we'll take care of it. In real life, there's consequences. Same in trading. Simulator doesn't give you that feeling or that emotion. So all these things are well and good, but the experiences is what's going to shape and mold you because those experiences are what allows you, wait for it, let's go all the way back, allows you to do this. It allows you to plan, implement, measure, assess, and improve. That is what experience allows you to do. Okay? So think about that. Think about all of those things. Work towards your defined goals with humility, objectivity, and patience. Okay? And of course, lots of hard work. Otherwise, talk is just cheap, man. The walk's expensive. The walk is where you earn your pay. You know, people talk all the time, man. The world's filled with talking heads. The walk. And don't don't worry. When you exceed, succeed after you've walked, you've walked the walk, they'll tell you you were lucky. They will. They'll make some excuse for why they failed and you succeeded. I'll repeat it. They, the other people out there, will make an excuse for why they failed and you succeeded. Okay? Think about that for a second. So, the sad reality? You're like, man, you left me on a strong note. Now here comes the water in the face. Most of you will fail. Your timeline's too short. You think you're different. You think you're special. You don't follow the rules. You blow up your account. You're not cut out for this level of personal accountability. It's a fact. And now I've said all these things too, you're going to want it even more. The more I tell you you can't have something, the more you want something. And I'm not telling you as a takeaway. I'm just telling you the vast majority of people listening. It's like this, okay? You go into medical school, your first day of class. The professor says, everybody stand up. Look to your left. Now look to your right. Those people won't be here by the end of the semester, by the end of the year, by the end of four years. Look to the left. Look to the right. Those people won't be here. Okay? That's a fact. Of the people out there, 10, maybe 20% are going to make it because they want it bad enough. That's the truth in every industry in the entire world. The cream rises to the top, man. But you have the capability to do it. You have the smarts to do it because if you have a, an IQ above Forrest Gump, then you can be a trader, period. You can do it. I'm not saying that to, to patronize you. You can absolutely do it. But you can't do it if you're not going to have rules. You can't do it if your timeline is too short. You can't do it if you're not showing personal accountability. But if you're going to do those things, you can and will be successful. So the question is, will you be that person? Right? It's like that line in Top Gun, right? Do you see your name on that plaque? Yeah. Something like that. I can't remember the exact line. So ask yourself, are you where you want to be right now? And if not, why? And what do you need to do to get to where you want to be? So ask yourself, am I where I want to be? Why not? What do I need to do to get to where I want to be? This is a tough, tough, tough game. It's a tough, tough business. But you can be successful. And many traders are successful. But you got to cut your teeth. All right? So that'll do it for this week's lesson on prepping for success in trading. I hope you guys learned a little bit. I am Jared Wesley of Live Traders. We will get back at it again next week.